This is Roxy. Roxy is a 170 Sprinter 4x4. Up here, we've got our shower walls in place midship. And we're going to have the refrigerator right here. That's about 23 inches wide. The Cruise 190 is a beast of a refrigerator. Look at this thing. It's the best of the best as far as I'm concerned. Look at the size of that freezer. I just wish it was a drawer style freezer because then I could mount this a little lower when I need to. But I do believe it's one of the best RV and boat refrigerators on the market. It's got two compressors, one for the freezer and one for the fridge. There's no propane. This is ACDC. Very well made. And then we'll have a nice office area with that swiveled driver's seat. Keep the window open as much as we can behind the fridge and behind the shower. Obviously, we black it out and we insulate the crap out of it like the rest of the van. We've got double uh, thin slate everywhere in the van and then when we put our ceiling panels in we uh, we line the back of the ceiling panels with reflectix so any heat or cold that does permeate through the double layer of thin slate will hit the reflectix and bounce right back out so we've got some uh, 80 20 modules going here this is the galley as you can see in the galley uh, we use our little wooden squares to assemble out on the table and we also use them when we bring the module in the van so that we can make sure we're square and plumb. This galley has a kick plate. You can see that the galley module is sitting on an elevated platform. The reason for that is those two bays down underneath there are going to be part of a passive radiant heating system. What we're going to do is we're going to put a little radiator, a two foot long radiator right on the back wall there. And we're going to seal up this galley so that the air gets sucked under the galley and by convection gets pulled up, heated and enters the cabin through a grate right back here. Quiet. It's silent, it's passive, and it will be individually uh, zoned. We're gonna have three zones of heat. We'll have that passive radiant. We'll have the radiant heat in the floor as a supplemental to keep your toes warm. And then we'll have cabin heaters, heat exchangers with fans. We'll have one over here. I'm gonna put passive over here too for the office to keep Sabrina's toes warm. And uh, we'll put one under the bed as well. So there's going to be a full uh, heating system and you just won't know where the heat's coming from. You'll just know that it's warm. And speaking of square and plumb, uh, you can see this pencil line down the floor. That's the center of the van. Okay, you don't measure off your side walls when you're building. You don't take your measurements off the side walls. These vans taper. Each platform tapers in a different way. And this van, for instance, the Sprinter, bows outwards towards midship, then it comes back in towards the tail. So you've gotta do a pencil line, center line, all the way down. Look at those screws, those screws are dead nuts on the center line. That's where you work, you work off the center line. Have I made my point? Okay, this is a game of Tetris here, look at this. Our 50 gallon water tank, which is on a bridge over the wheel well, we couldn't have made better use of that space. Those wheel wells have rattle trap, heavy mass vinyl, and then thin slate. And then we leave just enough space to our uh, C channels for our hatches, sensors, anything that's got to go in the top of that tank. And the top of that tank actually intrudes into the galley slightly. These owners wanted their sink in the center of the galley with prep space on either side. So what we'll do here, we'll give them a nice little drawer above the water tank. Then we'll have a cupboard below the sink. And then this is a drawer box. You can tell it's a drawer box because we add those two verticals in the center. Those get adjusted east-west, depending on the drawer glide we use.
So the entire bank of drawers runs off those two verticals. That way you get it plumb, everybody works together. If it's out of plumb, they all don't work. So it's actually easier to get everybody working correctly when they're all online. And then this will be another cupboard down the end. It's possible <clears throat> we may give them an outdoor kitchen right there. They're coming in next week to discuss. The other thing we do here, we brought out our monster square. This is an 80-20 square that we made, and it is as square as it can be. You know, we made sure that once we got a square, it ain't moving. It's pretty strong. And what we do with that is now that ensures that we are plumb and square to the floor. That's the thing. You got to get that floor down nice and even, plumb all the way across, and then we work off the floor. So now we know that this cabinet, this pantry cabinet we're putting in, we know that's 90 degrees to the floor because we use our square to get it there. And then that's going to help us all the way down the line. Uh, even with a trim piece, when we put a trim piece from that pantry to the shower box, the reveal has got to be parallel all the way up and down, right? There's our shower pan. This is a nice size shower. This is a beauty. Going towards the back, I love this garage. I absolutely love clear span in a van. I really like it. It's not always uh, necessary. You know, sometimes people want slide out trays where I can give them vertical supports across the center of this area. Then there's no need for these three inch C channels. We can do the whole frame with uh, just 80, 20. Uh, but I really like this system and we've come up with a very interesting way to do it. You can see there's a piece of angle that's inch and a half quarter inch angle that's mounted where the mercedes upfitters guide tells you to mount very specific right there then we put a three inch c channel on top of that the inner corner is curved up that's called a fillet that adds a lot of strength but it also creates problems for your bolts your bolts won't land straight so we make our own wedge washers let me show you what i'm talking about here look this is a sliver of a C-channel, okay? We just cut off a little bit to show you for demonstration purposes. You can see how there's a fillet, this curve down at the end here, and the fact that it's tapered. You see how that's tapered? Oh, look when I catch the light. See, it's thin here and thicker back here. That adds a lot of strength to the C-channel, but it gives us a problem when we want to attach a C-channel. Look. When you put the bolt in, it's crooked, right? No good. We want it straight like that, all plumb with the side like that. This is what happens. So what we do is we do the inverse. If you take, here you go, look. If we take two of these together, it makes a parallel shape. So what we've been doing is we're cutting off the bottom of our cutoffs. You know, obviously we don't get these from the supplier at this length. We have to make some cuts. So our waist cutoffs, we remove everything but the little wedge that we need. That's right there. Drill through it and it's ideal. Now our bolt goes straight through and you get a good solid connection. And then our crossbars at the top, again, there's no bounce. This is an overkill. These are lightweight panels, lightweight seat channels. We put a gusset on the end of each one of these beams. They can't swing side to side. They can't collapse. Everything is down pressure. The whole system is down pressure onto that angle, which is mounted where Mercedes wants us to mount it. Really nice, clean system. We're gonna put a, uh, a wire trough running across from one side to the other. In the past, I have talked about a wire trough. This is a little something that I designed in order to get wires and pipes from one side to the other. And you can run wires. It's very simple to lay these wires in from one side to the other. You know, it's, look, it's this simple. You lay the wires across 
and drop them down so they head further out to where they want to go. There's going to be a microwave down the end of that galley hole. So that is going to box out and set right there. You can see over here, I've got my two Marmaluke batteries, 1260 amp hours of power. And that box on the floor represents the aqua hot heater. That's my three zones of heat and hot water. The capsules, you saw us install these capsules, right? The fit and finish of this capsule against that van chassis is incredible. It's so beautifully tight and well-made capsule, right? This is van speed shop. The other way you can go with these bump outs is uh, flare space. I cannot speak to flare space. This was my first experience putting in these bump outs. I went with capsule for a number of reasons that my clients and I discussed. Capsule comes with, I think it's an Arctic turn, maybe motion window. It's a slider. They wanted an awning window. Flare space offers their bump out with the Lawrence awning window. So I ordered the Lawrence window from Flare Space and I ordered the capsules from Van Speed Shop. The Lawrence window from Flare Space fits this opening beautifully, like a glove. The problem we have is with the Lawrence window. Let me show you. This is a Lawrence window. See that? It's an awning style window, which means it cranks open. You can use it in the rain. I like that. Uh, as opposed to a slider, which eh, you can't really use in the rain. Anyway, the way this is designed, okay, there's a flange on the outside, a lip, and it has a black rubber tube gasket that goes all around and you can squeeze it, okay? So you bring the window in through your opening from the outside of the van, and then when you add this collar, this ring on the inside and screw it all together, you squeeze, you compress the window against the chassis and this tubular rubber gasket compresses and offers a watertight seal. That's great, ingenious design. But you gotta make this trim ring the right way so it fits. This one doesn't fit. The radius of the ring and the radius of the window are different. There's holes all through this thing, right? You gotta land those screws in a channel that goes all the way around the window. The holes don't line up. There's no way to get every one of these to compress evenly. If we're gonna be on the outside of the rim, on the inside of it, it's not working, okay? We spent a half a day trying to figure this out. I think this is made wrong, okay? Could be this one particular piece. It's got some numbers on it on a little label. So Monday, I'm going to call Lawrence and find out what's going on. We'll get to the bottom of this. Mini-me number five is finished. We're waiting for the futon mattress to arrive. Should come in a day or two. Then we get this girl all cleaned up and have the owner come pick her up. There's a few surprises in this one. Uh, this one was a build from the heart. We'll have a video coming soon.